So a question I've been getting a lot recently is how to use the new exposable arrays inside of Notch when we're working inside of Touch Designer with our Notch top and creating content in Notch and trying to use it in Touch Designer. If you remember previously, this was kind of a tricky thing to do because every time you want to expose a different parameter inside of Notch, you'd actually have to make a different set of exposed properties and then in Touch Designer, you'd have to control and reference each and every single one individually. This could be very tricky for situations where maybe you wanted to control all the lighting on a virtual stage that you were creating, or you're trying to do something similar to instancing in Touch Designer, but you wanted to use some of the effects and cool render tricks inside of Notch. When Notch added the exposable arrays, and very recently Touch Designer has added support for that, it allows us to take a lot of the same concepts we use when we're instancing in Touch Designer, but combine that with also the content creation power of Notch. So let's go ahead and I've gone ahead and made a brand new Notch project here. I've got a blank Touch Designer project here. And what I'm going to do first is inside of Notch, you can look for array in the node area here and you'll see a lot of these array objects. And what we're gonna use first is the exposable array. And this is really meant specifically for media servers. So if you're wanting to do some testing inside of Notch, you can use maybe the mouse point array or CSV table array or one of the other array forms as you're building the content. And then later on, you can come back and drop in your exposable array so that you can export that media block into Touch Designer. So the first thing I do when I drop down this exposable array is connect it to my root. And now I need to send the data that's going to be coming in from Touch Designer in this exposable array to something else. And the common thing you're probably going to do here is send it to a clone to transform array. And this is essentially going to take the data that we're feeding in from the exposable array and then use it to clone whatever we connect to its output. In this case, we're just going to do something really simple and clone a shape 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my root operator to the clone to transform array. I'm going to grab the output from my exposable array and plug it into the first bottom input of the clone to transform array. You'll see now we're A-OK -okay because we don't have the error from the red stripes. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and create a shape 3D here. And I'll leave this basically set to default because in this example, we're more focused on the connection between touch designer and notch. So I'll go ahead and connect the output of the clone to transform array into my shape 3D. Now you're probably not going to see anything when you hit play here, but that is all right because once we start implementing this into Touch Designer, we'll see the default sphere starting to get copied. Now inside of our exposable array, there are two parameters that we need to take note of. One of them is the num transforms, which is going to be telling us how many data points we're going to send in from Touch Designer. So Unlike maybe the traditional way you work inside a touch designer where if you're instancing, you can more or less change this number very quickly. I usually recommend setting this to the maximum number of objects you're going to need and not messing with it too much. If you wanted, you could also expose this num transforms as another exposed property, control that from touch designer as well. But right now we're gonna start with 10 so that we're gonna have 10 objects and we're gonna need to send in 10 data points. The next thing that we're going to need to do here is expose this property of transform data. And if you haven't used this exposable array before, this might be confusing because you don't actually see anything here, but this is the main input of data that we're going to get from Touch Designer. So we're going to go ahead and click the question mark to the left of it, and we're going to go down and hit expose property. It's going to fill in everything perfectly for us. We're going to hit OK. Now you can see we see one of our spheres here, but actually all 10 of them are here and just in the same spot overlapping each other. Now what's important to note as well is the transform mode. Now I often find myself leaving this in its default, which is position, Euler rotations, and scale. And that's the order of the data that we're gonna be sending in. So the channel order of the data we're creating in Touch Designer needs to have all the TX, TY, TZ positions first, then the RX, RY, RZ positions, uh, rotations second, and then the SX, S, Y, S, Z scaling third. If you are working with different kinds of data sets, 
you could drop this down, change it to either be a four by four matrix, or you could even switch to quaternions instead of Euler rotations. I think most people are probably gonna be using just this default position, Eulers and scale. So with that said, you know, I'm not gonna spend too much time making the content here. We're gonna focus on the touch designer side of things, but I can go ahead and click project, compile block for media server, and go ahead and save this on my desktop somewhere. I already have exposable arrays.dfxdll, so I'll overwrite that. Now what I can do is switch over to Touch Designer, drop in my notch block, Now once it's finished loading, we'll see our 10 spheres stacked on top of each other perfectly here. And if we go to our untitled layer, which is where our exposable array transform data is, you'll see it says transform data chop. Now this is really cool because previously, like I said, if you were trying to control 10 different things, you would have had to expose TX, TY, TZ, uh, RX, RY, RZ, scale, all these for every single one of the objects. And that could become very tedious and hard to scale up and down. Now what we can do is feed it a multi-sample chop with different channels for the transforms, rotations, and scales. And behind the scenes, Touch Designer is going to feed that data correctly to the exposable array uh, node that we created inside of Notch. So to make this a really simple example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some noise chops to generate positions, TX, TY, TZ. And then I'm gonna just use a constant just to set zero rotations and one for my scales. So to get started with this, I'll go ahead to my chops. I'll make a noise chop here. Now we know that we set the number of items to 10 inside of our num transforms here. And this is something we'll see and I'll show you the error in a moment, but you have to always respect this number because if you feed it too much data, you're gonna get a warning message. So the first thing I'll do in my noise chop is go to channel change the units on my end from seconds to samples. And we can see right now we have from zero to 599, which gives us 600 samples. And if I middle click, I'll see 600 I, which means 600 samples. So I'll go ahead and set that from zero to nine, which gives us 10 samples. Now you can go ahead and do whatever kind of fancy manipulation of the noise you want here. I'm just gonna go to the transform and have it animate a little. I'm gonna go to the translate, the TZ, and I'll type in abs time dot frame multiplied by 0 0.5. This will give me just a little bit of motion on this noise. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll decrease the period slightly just so I get a little bit more data inside of here. But then I can go ahead and go to the channel page. Let's call this my TX. And then I'll copy and paste it, change the channel name of the second one to TY, and then maybe change the seed as well, because right now with the seeds set to be both one, the noise is exactly the same. So I'll change that seed. Now we got two different noises. I'll make a final one for my TZ. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is start merging these together in a merge chop. So I'll connect all three of these and we'll see a very similar format to the data we would have used with instancing. You know, when we're using instancing, we create all these different channels, we create a sample per instance that we wanna make, and then we're free to just use that on a geometry comp to copy some object a bunch of times inside of that you know, GPU space. Now, this is what's nice is because this format is very similar to instancing, except we can feed this right into the notch top. Now, what you'll notice is if I go ahead and immediately reference this, we're gonna get a warning that says it's missing the other data that it's expecting. So if I take this null chop that I've created here, click and drag it and drop it onto the transform data chop, we'll see the warning. Channel, number, mismatch, position, rotation, scale requires nine channels. We only have three. So what I can do now, just to make this example faster, I'll make some placeholder channels for my rotations and my scale. So what I'm gonna do, a nice trick with the constant chop is that you don't always just need one sample. You know, we're so used to seeing constant chop 
with just one sample in it. But actually, we can go to the channel page of the parameters, turn off single sample, and now we can generate lots of different samples of the same value. And this is great if you want to make some placeholder data or just some temp data that you can use. So now in this case, I know I have 10 samples. So I'm going to set the start and end to be 0 to 9. But first, I'm going to make sure the units are correct here. So I'm going to change the seconds to be samples. And I'll set the end to be 9. Now if I middle click, 10 samples. And the nice thing about this constant chop when you're making these kind of placeholder channels is that unlike my noise here where technically I could have made all three noises all inside of one noise chop, but that would have needed a little bit of Python and to keep the example simple, I just copied and pasted it. Inside of our constant though, we can just click this plus button to give ourselves more and more channels. So I know I need three channels for my rotation and three channels for my scale. So I'll go ahead and even just name these for my own sanity. So Rx, Ry, and Rz for my rotation X, Y, Z. Sx, Sy, Sz for my scale X, Y, and Z. And my rotations can all stay zero. That should be fine. And I'll set all my scales just to be one. And then I can go ahead and merge these channels into my merge here. Now you can already see just by having the right kind of channel structure and data structure, we're already seeing this data come through inside of our notch top. Now this is really cool because what I can do is go to my noise chops and start playing with them. So maybe I turn up the amplitudes on each one of them. Maybe I increase the period on some of them, decrease the period on other ones. The nice thing is, the sky's the limit on what you want to do. And now our content example here is very simple. It's just a bunch of white spheres that are moving around very hectically. But the development that you can do with this and the ability to scale it and the ease of use you're going to have using this, because remember, this was just one chop that we referenced inside the notch top. Instead of previously, you've probably been experimenting and having to reference 10, 20, 30 different parameters into the notch top. Now the cool thing also is how this can scale. So right now we have only 10 objects here. And you'll see if I go ahead and maybe even on this constant set my end to be 99, we'll get a warning that says exposable array expects a length of 10. Now this goes back to notch in that when we had our num transforms property here, we had it set to 10. So I'm going to go to touch designer. I'm just going to deactivate my notch top for a moment, go back into notch, and I want to set this num transforms to be 100. Let's get 100 objects going in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just recompile this block. And then I'll go into touch designer and just reactivate it. So now the only thing we have to do is finish adjusting our noises here because even though our constant is now set to 100 samples, our noises are just still 10. So I'll right click and drag, select all of them, go to their channel and set their end to be 99. And now you can see we have 100 of those spheres going crazy all over the screen. I wouldn't consider this artistic content by any stretch, but the idea is the most important thing, which is that very easily we can now scale up the kind of content that we want to build between Notch and Touch Designer without having to go through a very tedious process of exposing tons more data, you know, then having to bring them into Touch Designer and reference all that different kind of data. That whole process can more or less be eliminated for a lot of the stuff that you want to do with this. So with that said, I hope you enjoy this trick I think it's going to be a really big game changer for how we use notch blocks inside a touch designer because now it's going to be much more easy to scale the content and control lots of different elements inside of notch without having to go through that tedious process of exporting every single thing that we want to play with here. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. 
It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.